Okay, in this video we will explore two things. We will explore the soldering of an item onto a uh, breadboard or PC board and we will explore also the desoldering of that item from breadboard or a PC board. Okay, in order to uh, do both of these uh, we'll start off first with our soldering. We have a soldering iron here. Soldering iron uh, I'm keeping in a stand that has a uh, wet sponge here for the purpose of cleaning the soldering iron through the process. We have a uh, PC board or some people may call it a breadboard. We also have a resistor that we're going to solder onto that board and we have some uh, solder for the soldering of the resistor onto the board. Uh, additionally you may want to obtain it, that's totally up to you, um, magnifying helping hands and these of course act like additional hands if you will as you're uh, soldering and desoldering items. Okay. Alright, so let's start our process. Make sure you're in a well ventilated area uh, first of all, because as you'll see in a minute, there'll be some smoke coming off of the soldering iron as we're soldering and desoldering uh, items. Okay, and it's a good idea to stay safe and not inhale or inhale as little as possible of that uh, smoke. So you want to make sure that you're in a well-ventilated area. Okay. Um, let's say you are in that well-ventilated area. Uh, first thing you want to do before you begin uh, for the day, you want to begin by uh, what's called tinning your soldering iron tip and what that means is you're just putting a little bit of solder on the tip and what that does is it helps to prevent uh, oxide oxidization of the uh, tip and it helps to make a uh, connection uh, between the uh, solder and the different metals that you're trying to bond okay so let's begin with the uh, tinning and for that we just go ahead and add a little bit of uh, solder at the tip here around the, the tip and we want to move that get that around the edges here and you'll see a little bit of solder falling off that's perfectly fine and of course you don't want to be working in an area that has a whole lot of paper either because this stuff is pretty hot and you don't want to, to get the solder on yourself either okay Okay, now that we've uh, tinned our soldering iron, we'll go ahead and clean it on our uh, wet sponge here. Okay, I have a little bit more on there, and sometimes this is a little tough to get off. And if it is a little bit tough, you can take a uh, wire brush and just brush the ends off a little bit. Okay. Okay, now that we have finished uh, tinning our soldering iron here, let's go ahead and uh, bring our board into uh, view. Uh, before you start soldering, you want to make sure that your uh, board, the middle area on the back here, is uh, clean. So you want to just brush it a little bit with that wire brush that I was using a minute ago. And this, of course, as I mentioned, uh, cleans the back of the board but what it also does is it uh, adds a little bit of a friction surface if you will to the uh, metal here and helps uh, for the bonding a little bit better and you pretty much want to just brush the area that you're going to be working on you don't want to brush the entire thing so if you have some sort of professional board that was done you don't want to brush the entire thing you just want to brush that area that you'll be working on because I have no components on here I'm just brushing the entire thing okay all right after you've done that you want to go ahead and if you have the helping hands uh, go ahead and connect that into um, the board into the helping hands there and th again that helps to keep the board stable as you're working with it all right and now let's go ahead and put the uh, component. You want to put the component on the opposite side of the uh, metal surface here. Um, 
if you're using one of these types of uh, breadboard, if you're using some of the more uh, professional boards where they may have double side sided components, then you need to know which side to actually put the component on. Okay, but because we're using this, we know that the opposite side over here has no metal on it, as you can see. But this side here has the copper on it, and this is where we're going to be making the bond on this side. All right, so let's go ahead now and put our uh, resistor in. Okay, and when you get your resistor in there, what you want to do is just bend the legs back just a little bit so that it stays in place as you're soldering. Okay, so I've bent the legs back just a little bit. All right, let's maneuver this just a little bit here. There we go. Okay, and so now you can see the legs are over here and over here. And they're bent just a little bit so that we can uh, turn the board over with the component in there and start doing our soldering. All right. Okay. So now that we've uh, gotten that uh, accomplished here, let's go ahead and uh, get our soldering iron. Uh, when you begin soldering or when you start, uh, solder, you don't want to start by putting uh, the solder onto the soldering iron and then touching the component, okay? What you want to do is you want to put the solder on one side and you want to put the soldering iron on the other side of the wire that you're trying to bond to the uh, metal surface. And so what that does, once you put it on the other side, you want to make sure that you're making connection both with the metal surface and the uh, component itself. And what that does, it, it, it heats up both of the components, the, uh, pardon me, the component and the wire, uh, the wire from the component and the metal surface. And when you bring the solder now to the other side, since both of them are going to be warm, it makes a nice connection in between the two, okay? And so now that we've gotten that uh, the component in there, we have the solder, we have the soldering iron, and we also know that we want to, uh, how we want to set up uh, in terms of making that connection, we can go ahead and solder. And um, while you're soldering, you want to think of one thing. You don't want to keep the soldering iron there longer than it needs to be there either because then you can end up damaging the components. You only want to keep it there as long as necessary, all right? So let's go ahead. I'm going to put the solder onto the other side of the wire there. And then I'm going to put the solder on the other side. Okay. And so we've made our connection between the two. And I'm going to go ahead and clean the soldering tip here just a little bit. All right. And you can see here now that I've made a connection now between the wire and the surface. Okay. I'm going to flip this over on the other side just so I can get a maneuver around it just a little bit better here and again I'm going to put the soldering iron on one side and then move the soldering on the opposite side here there we go okay and we have now both sides soldered to the board. All right. We have both sides soldered to the board. And as you can see, you have again both sides soldered onto the board there. All right. Once both sides are soldered onto the board, you can clip the uh, excessive uh, wire from the top here. And I'm going to use. Uh, this type of a clipper here. You can just clip, as I said, the excess wire. All right, and so now we've soldered the component onto the board, and we'll move towards now the desoldering process. Okay, we'll move towards the desoldering process.